Nesma, to this episode of AM Infocast. It's always uh, great to interact with you and great to have you on this uh, episode. Thank you very much, Aditya. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Yeah, thanks. And you know, before we dive into more specific uh, topics about your current role and what you're doing in in the UAE, uh, I just want to like to know about your journey uh, in this domain of additive manufacturing. How how has it evolved over these years? Uh, of course, yeah. So um, basically, to give you a bit of background, uh, I'm a trained mechanical engineer. And I've always had passion for manufacturing, how things are made, what materials they're made from, and so forth. Uh, and then I specialized more in my master's in materials and manufacturing, but that was all conventional manufacturing kind of thing. Uh, but then there were always the constraints of manufacturing that you had to consider whenever you are thinking of how to make a part or manufacture a part, what have you. Uh, and that's when I started to come from, to become familiar with uh, additive manufacturing. It was quite new back in 2013 when I started. Uh, also being from Egypt meant that the information comes to us a bit later than it does in the West. So it was quite early on for additive manufacturing, um, but uh, it really interested me how you can just relieve lots of those uh, manufacturing constraints. So I decided to get more structured training in additive manufacturing. And that's when I started a PhD in the field of metal AM, specifically using laser powder bed fusion uh, in 2013. Over the course of the following two years, I started working with printing aluminium, which was very challenging at the time. And lots of people said it won't work, but actually with perseverance, research and trying more and more and how the systems are evolving and developing over the time, uh, we managed to get it to work. And then uh, after that, I started printing more materials, getting exposed to other materials uh, like magnetic materials, titanium alloys, nickel super alloys, steel, and all these materials uh, are widely printable uh, now with applications. Then after that, I shifted to a fellowship in order to not just see how you can print materials with the existing technologies, but how can you develop new new technologies that follow the additive manufacturing in you know, opposed to the sub subtractive manufacturing approach uh, in novel ways. So that's when I did some work on drop on demand additive manufacturing and for metals again. And it's quite a hot topic now. We're seeing lots of systems coming up that are relying on liquid metal droplet uh, additive manufacturing as well. It's still not as um, mature as powder-based techniques but eventually it will find its uh, spot in the landscape. After that, uh, I left the UK because all this work has been in the UK. Uh, and I came to TII when I was approached by them in order to come and lead the additive manufacturing group here. Uh, and it really intrigued me how to move from the academic domain to focus more on applied R&D. There's still R&D, but it's more applied R&D where uh, you see the implication and the impact of the work that you're doing. Uh, and I started here in 2021, and it's been an amazing journey so far. Yeah, great, great to know the background behind you know what you're doing uh, currently. And uh, so, at at the Technology Innovation Institute, what are the major areas of focus in the in your 3D printing or additive manufacturing group? So we mainly split our scope into four different domains uh, that we try to cover in order to cover as much as possible from the additive manufacturing workflow. So the first one, for instance, is the processes. And I must start by saying that most of our focus is on metal additive manufacturing. Again, so we use uh, printers for polymers and other classes of materials, but just to print tools and things like that to prove designs, uh, but not really for research. Most of our research is on metal additive manufacturing. So the first domain is the processes where we do not just investigate the technologies that are existing now and how to expand the palette of materials that you can use with existing technologies, but we're also working on how you can make those technologies smarter. Not how we're using them today, but how they will be used in the future. So we're focusing on how the laser, ma laser material interaction works and how can you improve that to make the process of qualification of new materials faster and, and what have you. So that's on the processes domain. The second domain is the materials domain. And in this one, we focus on developing new materials for uh, laser powder bed fusion additive manufacturing. 
So usually the common thing to do is to use just whatever material you can find in powder form from commercial alloys that have been designed for um, other technologies like powder metallurgy and, uh, and so on. But the laser material interaction dictates a completely different uh, melting and solidification regime during manufacturing. So the, these existing alloys don't always work. So in the second domain, we are focused on developing new alloys that are specifically tailored for the additive manufacturing process. But at the same time, we have the application in mind. So we get that balance that ultimately gives you the full potential of what additive manufacturing can offer you. The third domain is design, which is a very critical one, uh, which is designed for additive manufacturing. And this is basically, we're not here to say, you know what, you've been doing this with standard machining or with casting or how the metallurgy for the past, I don't know how many years. And now we just want to do the same part with additive manufacturing. You won't get the full potential of what AM can offer you if you do that, because you're basically still applying the same manufacturing constraints that these conventional processes uh, impose on your manufacturing process. So in this domain, we focus on how can we redesign the existing parts so that they can actually perform better, what we call design for performance rather than design for manufacturing. And then the fourth domain is the application sector, which is basically bringing all these three together in order to uh, adopt them in an application so that you can see the impact of bringing together these three sectors and merging them together for applications in the space sector, energy, uh, automotive, aerospace, uh, oil and gas, uh, you name it. No, I think uh, it's it's going to be quite an important role that that TII plays in taking additive manufacturing forward in the region because of of the four uh, you know pillars you mentioned of of what you're focusing on. I think each one of it is important for that ecosystem to grow. And uh, you know, moving our uh, view towards the upcoming AM conclave, which is maybe less than three weeks away, uh, any any sneak preview you can give give us or our audience on what to expect from TII at at the event. What you can expect from us is two folds. The first one is the talk, uh, which I'll be delivering at the event. And in this one, I'll be mainly focusing on do we actually need new materials? Being quite a new field here in the Middle East, uh, additive manufacturing, usually people focus on the printer side of things and they don't really see the value in developing a new material. And also you can't, compl you can't really blame the, the human nature to change. So you're telling them change the manufacturing process and also change to a new material. It's a lot of change that people, the market resists at the moment. Uh, so that's why in the talk, I'm going to cover the uh, feasibility of using the existing material. What are the limitations there that are stopping you from getting the full potential of additive manufacturing? And what are we doing in order to develop new materials and why they are important? And I'm also going to give a sneak peek on um, some information regarding the proprietary new uh, alloy that we are developing at TII at the moment. We have some very promising results um, for developing a low cost, high strength aluminium alloy. Uh, so I'll cover that in my talk and tell people more about it um, until we go public with the information. So probably this will actually be the first event that we disclose information on this new alloy. The second fold is that we have a stand at the exhibition. So it's an excellent opportunity to come and meet the whole team who will be there to tell you what are we doing? How can we support the additive manufacturing domain uh, in the UAE and beyond? We're not just restricted to the UAE. And, uh, and also we'll tell you, will you see some of the parts that we have manufactured over the past two years? What have we done that's different from uh, other R&D sectors? Um, in in the region and, and beyond. Uh, and also we'll be able to show you some demonstrators uh, that are printed from our new proprietary alloy as well. Well, that's great. I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, these developments from you. Anything you are looking forward to from the event, any, uh, you know, your top three things you are looking forward from this event and uh, what, what it brings for you? It's very hard to narrow it down to just three things that I'm looking forward to, because I think the event will really be packed with things that we'll be looking forward to, not just myself, but the whole TII team, additive manufacturing team in general. Uh, but I'll just try to squeeze them down into three. 
So first, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to meeting the active players in the additive manufacturing ecosystem in the UAE and from the whole Middle East region as well, because we've been in some events over the past year, but most of the uh, people that we interacted with have been from the UAE. But I think that the AM Conclave is going to bring people from the whole MENA region, which will be great to showcase our work, get to know what these people are after and how we can tailor what we're doing to what the industry actually uh, once uh, also it will be a, a great opportunity to make the to meet the industrial adopters for additive manufacturing get to learn about what are their fears what's stopping them from adopting additive and how we can support them in this journey uh, and of course uh, I'm also looking forward to telling them about what we're doing and how we're advancing the field uh, so I think it's a win-win situation for both ourselves and the, the delegates that will be attending the event uh, in addition, also, I'm looking very much uh, forward for the exhibition because I think it's a brilliant idea to just bring everyone in one place. Uh, it's basically like a very fast literature review. You get everything, you know, the state of the art, what has been done from the last event that you've attended in additive to this event. All the companies, I'm sure, will showcase their new advancements. It's a very fast way to get to know what's the current state of play in the field of additive manufacturing. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for summarizing that for us and for the audience. And thank you for your time today uh, to join out of your busy schedule. And thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you in uh, Abu Dhabi in a few days. Thank you. Same here.